everyone and welcome to On the Hook Crochet, where we talk about wearable crochet style. And let's find out what's on the hook. Well, what's off the hook is my Think Pink top and I am finished with it. I just finished leaving in all the ends and I sewed up the sides. So I want to model it for you and show you what you can make to fit you. So, let me slide back here and show you how it looks. I made it just a little bit below waist. My waist is right there, so it's about four inches below my waist. I did uh, three rows of single crochet around the neck. I did three rows, or maybe four, one, two, three, looks like three rows around the sleeve, so those are matching. The sleeves are just above elbow length, and if you remember in the last video I talked about how I decreased the stitches. And you might want to do it even more than I did. These are still a little bit blousy, but they're also cool and they're not tight. So for a summer top, it's probably um, uh, maybe a better choice, I don't know, than a tight sleeve. I might make one like that the next time, you know, it just depends. But these are kind of an experiment. Now, if you'll notice that this yarn is very stripy, I don't like that, but I do love the yarn, just peachy top, and that was crocheted this way, so the stripes were going this way, and they were not noticeable at all, but on this, which is made out of the same yarn, cotton on denim, it is very stripy, and like I said, I don't really love this white-ish, pinkish right there, it doesn't match the other side, but you know, when I got there, I thought, I'm not going to worry about that because I didn't really notice it till I had already gotten up here toward the shoulder and I just thought, no, I'm just going to leave it. It's a little summer sweater. It's very comfortable. Uh, my husband really liked it, which is a big plus for me. <laughs> um, he likes me to actually wear what I'm doing on my channel, so that's what I'm trying to do. And also the back, which I wanted to show you, the neck comes up higher. It comes up right there. The last one I made was down a little bit lower, so that was my choice. Let me fix my light there. That was my choice to come up a little higher in the back. So that when I did, it didn't affect the front at all. The front is still the same scoop in the neck because that's the last thing uh, I do. I usually make the back, make sure it's long enough, and then I make the front to match it. You know, after I get to the shoulders, I make sure that it's the right length and it's the same number of rows along the side. And then, as you remember, we put our sleeves in going this direction, not like this. We turned the piece over and we laid it out flat and came over far enough for it to um, fit under our arm. If you can see that, I have some ease in there. There's probably, you know, a couple of inches. There's an inch on each side there. But I didn't want it really tight because it's a summer sweater and you don't want to get hot in it, even though I have felt the breeze through the little holes. And I'm not wearing a tank top under this. I am simply wearing my underwear and I'm not wearing a tank top. So um, it'll be even cooler because I won't need to wear an undergarment um, to be modest. You cannot see through it. Um, the one I made <clears throat> from yesterday, you can see through. And it is the purple cotton on denim, just peachy top. So obviously um, I made it with a larger hook. And I didn't disclose that in the last video. I meant to do that, so I wrote it in the um, description box down below in that video that I made it with a, I believe it was a K hook. And that's um, H I J K. It's three sizes bigger than the one that was called for. And if you look at the pattern very closely, you can see that that is a tight weave that they have going there. But you know, the thing about that is it doesn't have to be tight because you're going to have to wear a tank top under it anyway. So all just my opinion. Now, um, I hope you like this. I've, I worked hard on it. I've worked on it for quite a while, but um, I just sat down and decided I was going to finish it last night, and I did. So besides it being stripy, I really, really like it. <laughs> so I don't want to be too particular. It's just a summer top, and it's an experiment, especially the sleeve part. Now, what I want to do is show you some progress that I've made on three different scarves, one that I'm planning and two that I'm working on. This is the Green Eyed Lady scarf, Fire and Ice Shawl, excuse me. It's made by the Fire and Ice Shawl pattern, but it is uh, the Green Eyed Lady um, yarn. And I wanted to show you how that was making up because I'm 
a little ways on into it and I wanted to show you how it was looking and if I don't use a stitch marker I always put a stitch marker in the end when I stop crocheting on something and I just forgot here it was about to pull out on me see that way you can pull your thread and it doesn't come out and you probably already know that okay here's how much I've done so far I like the end of it this is very interesting the end of it is done in a circle so it's not a sharp point at the end. It's a rounded end on the, on the shawl. And I like that. That's interest and that is so different from just uh, a lot of shawls just come to a point and that's fine. But this is different and I like that. And look at that beautiful yarn. Now it is one color with different concentrations of that color. So you can see how that looks when it's crocheted up. There's a little bit of light right in there. I don't know if you can see that. Um, if I hold it up, you probably can. Right there, you can see there's a little bit of light and a little light here. So I really like that. It gives it some interest as well. So I've gotten probably about 15 inches on this. And I'm supposed to crochet to 33 inches. And then I will start to decrease to make the other side of the triangle. So that's exciting. I've got plenty of yarn. I've got another ball just like this. So I'm in good shape there. And I'm making that with a J-hook. I think it called for a J-hook, so I'm in, I'm in the ballpark on that. <laughs> okay, another scarf that I have in the works is, of course, the Armor Shawl. It's not a scarf, it's a shawl by Holly Miller of the Proper Pineapple. And I have taken the front of it and marked the numbers of the rows in here. And what I'm going to do is, because I will not have enough yarn to make that whole shawl, the one ball of the not beautiful yarn that I had. <laughs> it just wasn't beautiful. I could make it beautiful, but I decided I was going to make it because I paid a lot of money for it. You remember that one? Okay, so I am pretty far along on the scarf. I'm sorry, I keep calling it a scarf. It's a shawl, the armor shawl, and this is what it looks like so far. Now, it's very stretchy and very long. It's a good sized shawl. I like it. It's not too terribly huge, but I do like it. Now, what I have done is gone through my stash, and I decided that I'm going to add a color to it because I don't have enough of this yarn. I don't know if you can see that. The light's really blowing it out. There it is. Not the prettiest yarn I've ever bought. I have to admit it. I admit it. But I'm going to use it. And it actually it's, it's turning out very pretty in the scarf pattern. Let me hold that up and you can see that. Um, there are some ribs here, some ribs over here at the very beginning. There's some ribs there. And then there's lace thrown in there a little bit. But what I decided to do was to add a solid color to the scarf in the middle and maybe at the end or something to bump up that... Um, yarn that I don't have enough of. The only color I could come up with, because this yarn has a green tint to it. It has a green tint. So I came up with this yarn right here, and it is the Cotton Fair yarn that I bought when I bought the Bumblebee Cotton Fair. <laughs> I bought these two at the same time. And this is called, I believe it's called Moss. And it actually doesn't look bad there on the edge. Now what I'm going to do, I'm sorry I'm moving this around so much. Ah, there it is. What I'm going to do is do several rows in the green, and then I'm going to go back to the, the original yarn and do a little bit with that, and then do some more green, and maybe finish up with um, a border, and maybe if I have enough of this, I will make that the border yarn. I'm not really sure how I'm going to do it yet. I'm usually not like that. I usually want to plan out everything, but I see that I'm not going to have enough of this yarn to finish the armor shawl. It's a, it's a really big shawl. And I wanted to make the whole thing, although I might cut off a little bit of the end, um, end of the triangle right in here. I might cut it off right in there because um, I'm just really not a fan of really big shawls because I know I probably won't wear it if it's too big. And if I can wear it like a bib shawl, you know, like I always like to do like this and then roll it around a couple of times. I really like that. And if it's a little bit longer, that'll be great. I think that's probably what I'm going to do with it. Remember, a pattern is just an outline. But 
I have no fault with anyone making it exactly the way Holly wrote it because I love it. I think it's beautiful. But I ran out of yarn. I haven't run out yet, but I'm planning to run out of yarn. I will not have enough to finish it. So I'm going to have to um, accent it with an, another color. And I was going to choose black, but now that I look at it very closely, the dark specks in here are navy. And I have no navy thread anywhere. Navy is not my color. I don't like it that much. So um, if I didn't do black, I would need to do some kind of a, kind of a green color. So that's what I found. All right, this morning I went on the web. I got an email from, let me fix my light. I got an email from Chandy from Expression Fiber Arts. And I get an email every so often and she'll say, um, I have a free pattern for you, you know, for the next day or three or four. And I immediately go out and take a look at it because I love her patterns. And um, she usually makes them out of very tiny yarn, but I can sometimes avoid that. I did make one of her um, one of her scarves in the I think it was the beach scarf that I made, and I used her pattern and it called for two strands of fingering together. And then she said, if you want to make it out of worsted, you can, which is what I did. I used a Karen cotton cake to make that, and I really really liked it. But I didn't make it nearly as big as she had it. But anyway. I went out on the web and I saw this, and this is absolutely gorgeous. This is a shawl, but as you'll notice, there's no fringe on it anywhere. <laughs> I really like that because I'm not a fringy gal, but um, a lot of times hers have lots of fringe. Well, this was not designed by her. It was designed by um, a lady called Christina Smiley, and she uh, apparently is in um, business with or is just working with Chandy who owns the website and they released this pattern <clears throat> and I don't know if it's free to everybody but you might just jump out there and see it may not be free but to me the yarn that she used here is absolutely gorgeous and it calls for four different skeins of silk lace yarn in purity pink pearl royal jelly and timekeeper which I don't know which colors those are but there are four colors in the in the shawl one is a yellow Kind of a yellow one is a beige and one is a, a kind of a bluish gray and there's a little bit of pink in there I believe in the back and I don't have all the pictures there are a lot ton of pictures on our website of this shawl so you should go out and take a look at it the shawl's name is called presence p-r-e-s-e-n-c-e -E -E. p-r-e-s-e-n-c-e -E. and I'll put a link to it down in the description box and look at all the pictures of it, it's really beautiful. And it's done in treble crochet and single crochet and chain. So it's one of those really easy, awesome patterns that she puts out. And I decided that I would try to use up some of my stash. So for the main color, which would be the beige, and that's right here at the top. And let me get it up here. This is a pretty big part of the shawl, it's the very first part. Then there's some pink down in here, yellow, and then the gray there with some yellow between the two stripes. So the beige part is the main color. And I have a ton of this um, fingering sock weight, it's actually sock weight, which is perfect size for this. It's very, very tiny. And this is the Artistic U yarn, which I've shown before. And I was gonna put two strands together and do something with it, but I'm not gonna do that. I've got four huge hanks of 450 yards a piece of this, so I'm gonna be using this on uh, <clears throat> the Presence shawl. So that will be my main color. Then I have, for the yellow, I'm going to use the yellow that I used for the, um, the scarf that I made a while back. Um, I just called it a yellow scarf, I think. I don't know what I called it, a summer scarf maybe. And oh, it was so beautiful. I really love the yarn. And I had two and a half balls left of it. It's called Essentials by Cotton Lurex. And it's a Rico yarn. Each, it's made in Italy. It's quite lovely and wonderful. And I, it's got a little bit of a sparkle to it. I know you can see that now. I'm seeing that. Uh, it has a sparkle to it. So I'm going to use that on the yellow part, which is right in here. And then for the border, which is down here, 
I like for people to show the pattern so that you can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to use black. I'm going to use yellow, green, and black. And I don't know how that's going to turn out, <laughs> but I'm sure we'll see eventually. The black may be too harsh. I might have to go with a very, very dark brown or something. But honestly, I kind of like the black. I think it would make a nice statement around the edge of the shawl. It's just a little bit of it. It's not very much. And black is one of my very favorite cover colors, and so is green. So black and yellow are two of my very favorite colors together. I don't mean to shake that. Black and yellow. And then I'm going to throw in some green and we'll see what happens with that. So I've already got it packaged up in a bag because I've assigned this yarn to this pattern. And that's one of the things I like to tell my viewers. First of all, find beautiful yarn if you want to do it that way. And then when you get it home, assign it a pattern. And what I've done is over the, you know, the last few years, honestly, I have printed off patterns and put them in a pattern folder. I don't punch them and put them in notebooks and all that. I just put them in a folder. I like it. I put it in there. And then every so often, I'll flip through there and I'll see something that looks like it might be fun to make or it might go great with this yarn I just bought. And that's what happened here. I got the pattern and then I went over to my stash and I said, you know what? I'm going to use these colors because I have the yarn and I love the colors of the yarn. So uh, that is kind of how I work. I, I want to be planning all the time, even if I've just got bags lined up in my office, which you, you would be appalled if you saw all these bags. <laughs> I have bags everywhere. And then I have a um, box of yarn that I just throw a, a skein in there every so often when I you know have one left over, I'll throw those in there. So anyway, I just uh, wanted to tell you that might be a good thing to try if you're, if you're not one to be very organized. I am not really, but I do like to organize my yarn. I am serious about my crochet. All right, so I will see you next time when I invite you to come back and find out what's on the hook.